the flow of breath, the flow of movement. Like water, breath has no bones. Its flow is inevitable. A dancer might wish to create an image as fluid, of sand draining within an hourglass. And yet, an element that seems so subtle has an anatomy, mechanics, movement, energy and rhythm, essential sources in a dancer's training, where mechanics become flow mechanics, anatomy the origin of movement from the back with breath, rhythm the vital pulse of the heart, each a center of power and expression. With time and repetition, the principle of extension from breath in its simple form becomes so firmly rooted in the dancer's physicality that it will become second nature to move in this way. Training will develop a growing range of dynamics and movement quality. Percussive movement is as natural as laughter, but in dance, not so easily achieved. The speed of a reflex is needed with the articulation of slow motion. Full stretch without rigidity or unnecessary tension. Like a held breath, the dancer can be still without being static. The movement can be suspended, not blocked. Percussive movement also requires exact placement. The internal sense through the dancer's whole body, which aligns and balances each part into the working whole. Gradually, a durable foundation is built, strong, flexible, well-coordinated, articulate, and ready to support movement through space. At the bar, new controls will be learned. The thrust of a breath out to move forward into a coil, or a breath in to stop momentum and change direction. Practice at the bar allows for full body movement and maximum use of space without the worry of balance or instability. Alignment carefully developed on floor work becomes automatic and second nature. Subtle changes in position, musical accent, or movement quality are practiced, with attention given to every detail. Even a hand incorrectly placed can distort alignment. Correctly implemented, the bar is used as a reference for balance, never to support. After countless repetitions and corrections, ability and confidence develop. These dancers are not only practicing movement, they are practicing how to move with total physical commitment. They are ready to move to the center floor where space is the focus and where the instinct to reach out and extend into space can be developed. Technical work requires that a dancer know exactly where they are reaching toward, how they are going to get there and where they are coming from. To lay the groundwork for movement in spiral takes us back to the floor and the principle of movement from the hips. The objective is to activate the base of the spine where the spiral begins its coil on the bones of a hinge-like movement, hips, waist, shoulder and head, moving around a central core. Once the central core is well established, more external elements can come into play. In this exercise, the very mobile arm and shoulder, which independently have a very wide range of movement, are restricted, limited to move in response to the hips as a figure eight is drawn using the arm as a brush. The figure drawn in this way limits the superficial movement of the arms and encourages the fuller, deeper movements of the whole back. Follow through is again seen of hips, waist, shoulder and head. The fuller the circle of the figure eight on the floor, the fuller and deeper the movement of the body curving inwards and around center. A shift from accent on precision in movement to movement quality can now begin. What becomes important will not be what you are doing, but how you do it. Visual images can be used to work the dancer's imagination with their bodies as they try to physicalize an idea. The image, for example, like a coiling whip, which wraps and coils around center in response to action from a handle or pelvis. An image which is true and vivid should also help to sharpen technical execution. 
Another example, the spiral of the corkscrew, can illustrate the use of spiral to rise from the floor. The sweep outward around center in a sitting forth position is repeated from a kneeling to a standing forth, with the same spiral curving across from the right ankle around the hips, waist, shoulder, and finished with a turn of the head. When turns are initiated from the action of a spiraling back, they can give the impression that they might continue indefinitely. So long as a dancer maintains a strong sense of center, the play of the torso around center can renew itself throughout various changes. The simple basics which we began with will always be there. The hinge turning around its axis, the coil starting at the base of the spine, the litany of follow-through, hips, waist, shoulder, and head, and the perpendicular plumb line around which the action takes place. In a lesson, many kinds of exercises concentrate on spiraling movement. The work throughout can be most effective if it begins with a clear image that translates a visual idea into the reality of the human body in motion around its own axis. Or traveling through space around the spatial center. In the abstract, we can imagine a flat shape that wraps itself around another perpendicular. Taken as movement, we have a pivoting turn moving around the dancer's sense of a perpendicular line through his own center up from the pivoting foot to the top of the head. This awareness as hips, waist, shoulder and head rotate around a central axis gradually develops and carries forward into other exercises, other movements, which echo the same relationships, hips, waist, shoulder and head in rotation. In this way, a primary visual image develops into the sense of the physical spiral, moving from the shoulders and head, continuing around the curve of the waist and down to the pivot point of the foot. Performance of off-center movement is dependent on the strength and balance of a very developed center. Extensive technical preparation is required to develop a powerful core able to support and protect the dancer as it creates an impression of ease and stability. Once again, the work in the lesson begins with a repetition of simple movements at progressive levels. Training will extend natural balance to a highly developed ability to counterbalance during transitions from center to off-center. In this exercise, for example, the exact point where balance becomes imbalance becomes absolute knowledge. At first, at an elementary level, the dancers may hold the bar as they stretch forward, working toward the moment when they can release the bar and sustain a controlled fall through space. A condition for the development of strength is stress. Exercises which prepare for off-center work are heavier, more strenuous. This floor exercise centers on the development of the strength of the big muscles of the back and stomach needed for off-center work and on the ability to control and articulate movement at the break of the leg. The coordination and balance for an off-center jump can be mastered on the floor before the risk of a premature attempt. In any discipline, the test of effective training is that the right activity will perform the right action. If the exercises in a contemporary lesson are to meet the challenge of contemporary choreography, they must vary greatly. Some slow and sustained at the center, others freer and quicker at the bar. At one moment, the focus can be to extend the body's maximum range of movement, and at another moment, looking to extend the range of the dancer's movement into space. Gradually, the command of physicality is developed and extended. From day to week to year, the structure of the lesson develops the structure of the dancer's instrument. The training is long and the work is hard. In the crucible of time, the mold is a dancer's own will and vision of their instrument in perfection. In different times and different places, only a few, even sometimes only one will emerge who will be an artist. 
able to hold a vision beyond the perfect instrument, to see beyond the thousands of hours of preparation in the studio to the moment when the step will be taken into the place of imagination, which each of us carries deep within ourselves, dancer, choreographer, member of the audience. In that single moment, the hours, days, and years merge and become one in the magical aura of performance where the body will speak the image. The language must be articulate, clear, spoken without reservation. Whether in sadness or joy, the commitment is total. Freedom and spontaneity rest light and secure on the discipline of training. The gift of many teachers, in whose hands the even more precious gift of talent has been entrusted. This is a special world, in which life and artistry are one, woven from the same fabric. In this world, the possibility of anything becomes the probability of everything limited only by the extent of the work that has been done and the bounds of the imaginations of those involved. The prizes will be great, as will be the cost, nothing less than total dedication.